Hello Expedition Footprints kids! Happy New Year! I am so glad you're here. I'm Miss Tasha and today I have a great story to tell you. But first, let's pray, okay? And I want you to give me those great big loud amen shouts at the end of my prayer, okay? All right, bow your heads, close your eyes. God, we thank you so much for this wonderful day that you've given us and for this new year that is before us. Help us to learn the stories that you teach us. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Good job. You guys are so good at that. Okay. Um, I hope you guys all got your December calendar in the mail. With the calendar, you should have gotten this little flyer, which is our 2021 Be a Giver Challenge. Will you help me work through that list of things this year? There's some things on there. Your mom and dad can help you to read them and maybe we can do them together. Practicing giving, that makes Jesus really happy. And so I want to be a better giver and I'd like you to do that with me. Okay, are you ready for today's story? I want to tell you a story about David and how he trusted God. So today, you're only going to need your Bible. This story is found in the book of 1 Samuel, starting in chapter 16. Saul had been the king, but he kept disobeying God. So God asked Samuel to find a new king. God said to Samuel, go to Bethlehem. And there's a man there named Jesse, and he has eight sons. And one of them will be the next king. So when Samuel first met the sons, he automatically thought that the oldest son named Eliab would be the king that God had chosen. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at the way he looks or how big he is. Eliab is not the one I have chosen. The way he looks doesn't matter to me. I look at the heart. So Jesse brought out his next son to meet Samuel. And his next son and his next son. But none of them God had chosen either. But Samuel asked Jesse, Have I met all your sons? And Jesse replied, Well, I have one son left named David. He's the youngest. He's out looking after the sheep. I can bring him here to meet you. And as soon as Samuel saw him, the Lord spoke to him and he said, He's the one. So Samuel anointed him with oil, which is a special way of promising him that he would be the next king. And from that day on, the power of the Lord was with David. David continued to take care of his father's sheep in the fields. And when he didn't have much to do in the field, he played instruments and he wrote songs and poems that you can find now in the book of Psalms in your Bible. Meanwhile, Saul was still king and he ruled people, the people called the Israelites. And David and his family were Israelites too. And the Israelites weren't getting along with the people named the Philistines. The people with the Philistines was the, the problem with the Philistines was that they had many giants living in their land, really big people. And one of the strongest and biggest giants was named Goliath. He was over nine feet tall, which is taller than any person recorded in the Guinness Book of World Records. You know what I want you to do today? I want you to get one of your biggers in their house and a measuring tape and I want them to pull the measuring tape nine feet and lay it on the floor okay after the video you guys do this pull that measuring up nine feet and I want you to lay on the floor and mark how tall you are next to the nine feet so I want you to see are you three feet four feet five feet and see how much bigger Goliath was okay so that's what I want you guys to do this afternoon so Goliath he was covered with armor to protect him from and he carried a big spear 
big. Of course, he'd have to carry a big spear, right? He was really big. Every morning and every evening for 40 days, he shouted to the Israelites in his big, deep voice, Hey, you guys! I dare you to find one man to fight me. Is that a big, deep voice? <laughs> if you can beat me, we will become your servants. But if I win, you will become our servants. <laughs> That's funny. Me doing it is funny. But when Saul and all his men heard this, they were very afraid. Three of these men were David's three oldest brothers. They were the only ones in David's family that could go and fight because they were old enough. Now David's father Jesse, he heard about the giant and he was worried about his sons. So he called David out of the fields and he asked him to take some food to his brothers and to report back on how, how they were doing. So David set off to visit his brothers and as he approached them, he heard Goliath shouting his challenges like he did every morning. Isn't somebody going to stand up to this man? David asked the men in the army. Nobody answered. Nobody was brave enough. Then I will fight this phil giant Philistine, he said. <laughs> One of the men overheard this and he ran to Saul and he told him what David had said. And Saul approached David and said, You can't fight Goliath. You're only a boy, and he has been fighting for many years. But David said to Saul, I have had to fight lions and bears to protect my father's sheep. God helped keep me safe then. He will help keep me safe now. It was too bad that Saul, the king, wasn't trusting in God to help him. He didn't know what to do to beat Goliath. Then this young boy named David came, and he knew in one day exactly what to do, and he trusted that God would help him. And that's why God loved David's heart and wanted him to be the king. So Saul dressed David up in heavy armor to protect him from Goliath, but David took it off. It was too heavy. He could hardly walk, and he knew that God would keep him from harm. So instead, David went to a stream nearby, and he found five smooth stones and he put them in a pouch around his waist. And with his sling, he went to Goliath. As David approached Goliath, Goliath looked at David and thought it was a joke. Goliath thought he could easily beat David, and it was funny that Saul would send a small boy to fight him. But David said to him, without fear, you fight with a sword. I come with God on my side. And today, everyone will know that there is one true God in this land. Goliath didn't care what David said, and he moved closer to attack him. And David ran quick, quickly to meet him. Reaching into his pouch, he pulled out a stone, and he put it in his slingshot, and he shot it at Goliath. And the stone hit him right between the eyes. And suddenly, Goliath started to lose his balance Oh, and he fell with a thud right on his face. David had done it. He had beat the giant Philistine. And when the rest of the Philistines saw this, they ran away. And David became the hero to all the people of Israel. Wow. David trusted God a lot, didn't he? Do you think that we can trust God the way that David did? I think we can too. Let's play a little game, okay? We'll call it, My God is Bigger. So when I say, My God is Bigger Than, and then I'll name something that God is bigger than, you guys should act like whatever I say, okay? So if I say, My God is Bigger Than a Mountain, I want you to be a mountain. Can you do that? All right, let's play. Are you ready? Okay, my God is bigger than rivers. <laughs> Can you be a river? What is a river? Is water? Maybe lay on the floor and be water. Good job, good job. How about this? My God is bigger than the earth. Can you be the earth? 
can you be the globe? Ooh, I am the earth floating around in space. Good job. You guys are good earths. How about this one? My God is bigger than an elephant. Can you be an elephant? Yes, you can. Oh, you guys are great elephants. Oh, I love that elephant sound. Good job. How about my God is bigger than a truck? Can you be a truck? Dump truck dumping your stuff out or a semi truck driving down the road. Good job. You guys are good trucks. How about my God is bigger than the sun? Ooh, how do you be a sun? Oh, that's a good sun. Oh, you're very bright and shiny. Woo, woo. I can't see. I can't see. <laughs> good job. That was fun. Can you name other things that God is bigger than? Keep playing this game at home with your family all day long. My God is bigger than. Well, that's our story for today. I hope you keep playing the game and don't forget, figure out how big Goliath was compared to you. Use that measuring tape. And I hope that you keep learning to trust in God and know that God can help us in many, many ways. All right, let's pray, okay? Thank you, Jesus, for teaching us about David and how brave he was and how much he trusted in you. Help us to trust you like that this week. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Remember that Jesus loves you, and so do I. I'll see you next week.